Okay, so this is a bit of an experiment. Um, <laughs> please welcome from Bucharest, where I don't think it's even 6 a.m. yet, Radu Jude. Hello. Hello, hello. Let's see on screen. Ah, okay. Hello. Thank you for coming to the film. Um, I think I think you heard the applause, Radu. Thank you. Yes, I know Americans are very polite. <laughs> One can never know. <laughs> Not always, you know. You Not know, always, but, yeah. Okay, yeah. I have, you know, I have in my uh, in my uh, Zoom thing uh, uh, different virtual backgrounds. Yeah, tell us about your background first, maybe. Oh, this one, uh, this one is uh, an American artist called the King Holtz, and it, it's called Portable for a War Memorial. But uh, I have something like that as well. I can change it, and, <laughs> you know. So it's, uh, it's uh, at some point I did something like. Um, live montage you know while, while talking to 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 somebody in an interview you know according to the topic <laughs> we can uh, we can just do it live like that <laughs> okay <laughs> okay that's I, that's from romania that's not america I'm, that's romania that. yeah okay i'm gonna ask a couple of questions and then I'll, we will take some from the audience which i will repeat to you so first question is and the subtitle of the film is Sketch for a Popular Film. Yeah. Can you tell us what you mean by that, the idea of sketch and also <coughs> popular? Uh, well, first of all, it was a, a, a kind of, how should I say, uh, um, a, a feeling that I got from the beginning of this project, which is many years because it, it, it had different shapes the the project the script so to speak although it was not a script it was a, a pile of notes mostly but at some point i i discovered that the story itself the story of the teacher with the porn video which was a tabloid story it was in the press a little bit two or three cases similar cases in romania and in other uh, nearby countries the story itself is not uh, interesting uh, very much uh, is more interesting what is um, the connection between this story to other topics uh, uh, like social top. I mean, it, it is a, a small story, a small, trivial, uh, little bit dirty story, which happens, in my opinion, to be in the middle of uh, different currents of, uh, of, uh, of thinking towards society. I mean, uh, privacy versus uh, public uh, rights versus obligations, uh, personal versus political, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So at some point, I said, "Well, it's much more interesting not the story, but what is around it. But how can you structure something which is around the story? It becomes a little bit uh, uh, of a problem." And uh, and in a way, my uh, my solution came from a book, uh, a book of Andre Malro, a book of art um, essays called uh, uh, in English I have it is called Voices of Silence the Voices of Silence and in it at some point Malro has this idea uh, which I think is brilliant he takes a, an old painter like Delacroix and he mentions that Delacroix used to keep uh, very carefully his sketches and if we look with the nowadays mind to, us, to the sketches of Delacroix, which are not finished, are a little bit uh, more brutal, more, uh, more, uh, more rough uh, as any sketch, you can see them with a different eye, with the eye of somebody trained seeing Paul Klee or Picasso and so on and so forth. So all of a sudden a sketch is in a way more modern or more open than a finished thing. And that was a kind of idea I said, what what would happen if I would apply this idea of a sketch to, to the film, to the, to the project I was having? And regarding the popular part, it's also a little bit of, uh, of uh, because it, it, because of the story, because it involves uh, sex, because it involves, uh, you know, a lot of uh, trivial things, a lot of cursing. I said, yeah, well, this is my 
my way of making a popular film so people cannot accuse me of being highbrow like it happens sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> um, can you tell us about the title? Like, I mean, this, what is, what is, what's, the, what's the title in Romanian? And like, is, is, is bad luck banging or loony porn an accurate translation? Yes, it is uh, an accurate translation, but there are more uh, nuance, more detail in Romanian because babardeală, the means that we, we, we have for, uh, for banging or shagging, is uh, also a gypsy word, a Roma word. Uh, so it has uh, many people refrain from using it because of this kind of racism uh, around it. So I, I use it consciously for that. And for instance, when the film was uh, presented in Berlin, in Berlin Film Festival, when it had the international premiere, uh, there were uh, a television or a radio, people didn't say the title. They just said that the, the new film of Radu Ju, they will be in Berlin, but <laughs> didn't say the title. And there was also film critics that, uh, especially from an older generation that said, you know, I had to look up the word in the dictionary because I didn't know what it means because it's, you know, it's, it's a kind of a little bit vulgar word. So people wanted to make clear that they don't even know the word, <laughs> you know. Uh, so and the other word, uh, uh, balamuk, uh, which means crazy, but also loony bean, something like that, loony, loony bean, is used very much by the tabloid press and by very, very low forms of entertainment. You can go to, to popular theater and uh, a balamuk marriage would mean something like, you know, a marriage which goes crazy. So it's, it's used a lot in very popular entertainment uh, forms. So when did you write this film? And, and because to me, to me, this is, I think this is one of the films that speaks to the present day. Um, and I think it's a film that in many ways kind of sums up the, the world, the culture that we are living through. But uh, I think you actually wrote this a few years ago, right? You, you didn't, it was pre, a pre-COVID script. Uh, as I said, it was, yes, it was in another form, uh, 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 a script uh, to, to apply for funding, a little bit different than uh, different forms appeared and it started like five or six years ago or five or six years before the shooting. But in the meantime, because I try, it, it's very difficult to get funding for a film, so I try to have more projects to, to go in parallel with them. And my previous films were films that dealt uh, primarily with history history of Romania, of racism, or, of, uh, or, or, or about the involvement of Romania in the Holocaust, this kind of thing for which I did a lot of research. And I was a little bit fed up by working on, um, on uh, three or four films dealing with history. Um, and uh, I wanted to do something about the contemporary times that was before the pandemic, of course. And, uh, but I had also the idea to try to use and there is a little bit theorized it, I think, we, of, uh, with a Walter Benjamin quote in the second part. I wanted to <coughs> somehow make a film about the present, but with the attention that you, you have usually for the details of historical things. Because if you go to Pompeii or to other historical site, I don't know, uh, people try to look very, very careful at every stone, every small painting on the wall becomes interesting. And of course, we don't have the same attention. We don't pay the same attention to our world. We don't, we don't look at our world like it's already history. So I said, how would it, would it be if we try to apply this eye, this gaze, to nowadays and then pandemic uh, happened and uh, it stopped our production for a few months for six months basically um, and then i uh, decided with my producer with Ada solomon i said because she wanted to postpone or, or it was a discussion should we postpone it one year more because we were very naive you know back then we said it's gonna disappear in one year everything will be as it was. And I said, well, let's not wait. I mean, let's make the film. It's about contemporary times. And she said, what do you do with actors? I said, no worries. They have the chance to, to act better now because I will have them with masks. No, nobody's uh, seeing them very well. And, uh, and uh, it was a joke, of course, but uh, 
I, I told it to the actors, they didn't like it. So, uh, and, uh, and uh, yeah, so it was a film and the, the pandemic added a kind of another layer uh, uh, to our reality and to, to the film itself, uh, to the film itself. Uh, and it becomes a symbol, you know, all this mask thing, I'm, I'm not uh, versed in psychoanalysis, but I, I think somebody, who likes to interpret things in this way can find uh, something to, to think about in this. Yeah. So y you mentioned this, you know, this idea of, of vulgarity, and I feel like that's something that the film is really engaged with. This question of like, what what is vulgar, what is obscene, like, you know, what do we mean when we call something obscene today? And I, I wonder if you can maybe elaborate on this on this idea that the film seems to develop in in, in each of its parts. Yes, actually, it's. Um, I, I don't. I, of course, it's uh, uh, the definition of some of what is obscene is uh, very cultural or cult culturally based. Uh, it uh, it depends on the time. It depends on the on the space. Uh, what can be considered obscene in Romania is probably not in USA, but maybe more in Saudi Arabia. I don't know. It's all these things that. Uh, that we 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 go around uh, and um, and I, I did the film with the, this idea in my mind is true. I even called it at some point. Well, it was much uh, much uh, more uh, pretentious. Called essay about obscenity, you know? um, but of course I gave up this title. But the idea remained, uh, and of course it's made with uh, with the eye uh, to the room. To, to where I live and, and where I work, which is Romania. And uh, we have, I found it, I find our society extremely, um, if not hypocritical in itself, or but not, not because people are hip hypocrites, but because the way you, we go around these values is very hypocritical in a very broad sense, not only in a very small psychological sense. So um, yes, this kind of stories, and it's also maybe because of, of a historical situation, because uh, we didn't have a, a church uh, to, to like a Protestant church, I don't know, to, to, to keep people under very tight rules, but we had a communist and other before fascist dictatorship that had this problem also extremely, extremely tight uh, uh, kept all this in tight control. So the definition of obscenity, uh, everything which is related to, to sexuality is very big here. So big that people are going crazy if you mention sexual education, sex ed classes, and everybody goes against this idea. They say, how can we talk to our kids about this kind of thing? And of course, in the other, uh, uh, I would understand this, but I, th I, th I, th I consider it and the film shows that that other types of bigger obscenities of of things uh, completely uh, obscene are around like the the uh, refulation uh, return in a way and we don't even notice them anymore it's a very vulgar society people talk very vulgarly normally uh, but in the same time you know, it's, 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 a, it's a kind of hypocrisy, a very big, a huge a planet of hypocrites. <laughs> I'm just going to ask one more, and then we still have a lot of people here, even though it's very late, so I want to take some audience questions. But my last question for you is just if you could say a little bit about just conceiving of the film as a, a three-part film with three very distinct parts and this sort of this sort of narrative that has very strong documentary elements in the first part and then this essayistic middle and then this kind of stylized comic kind of outrageous you know climax well apart from what i've seen what is what, what we spoke when we uh, we mentioned the sketch uh, thing um, i would say that um, there is in uh, in uh, in the narrative cinema of uh, today uh, I don't know, American one, European one, and it can be very good. It's not a question of, uh, of value. Uh, there is a, a tendency to make, to respect, you know, the traditional dramaturgical structures um, with uh, stories, characters, uh, everything uh, in the story has to be happened by necessity, dramaturgical necessity and so on and so forth. 
And one, of course, some of these films are wonderful, some boring, some uninteresting. But I think little by little, as a viewer, I'm speaking now, not as a filmmaker, you get a little bit annoyed or bored by these uh, structures repeating themselves over and over again. You know, uh, literature is not like that, uh, in a way. I mean, uh, if you look at the 20th century literature, you can have something like, I don't know, I just read it one year ago, the USA trilogy of John Dos Passos, which is not something uh, as conventional as all the other books or Ulysses of James, just whatever. You, uh, I think literature uh, as, and theater as well, maybe because they don't involve so much money, it's a little bit more open to, to more experimental in the structures, to be more experimental in the structure, to experiment with structures and film less so. But in this case, as I said, uh, uh, this was not only my desire to experiment a little bit with the structure, but it was uh, mandatory to do something like that because in a traditional structures, um, you will have only the story, so to speak, more or less the story and everything, uh, you have to sacrifice a lot of things in order to, to, to keep the, the, the dramaturgical rules uh, very clear to, 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 to go on uh, with their flow, so to speak. And in this case, I, 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 I consider that it's much more important to have all these elements in one way or another in the film. And well, the, the, the structure, especially the second part, the dictionary is, is a way to keep all these things uh, in the film because the film is them. It's not uh, the story and them are superfluous. No, the film is all these things. So to keep them following the old idea of Jean-Luc Godard, who said that you, you have to put everything you like into a film. Okay, we, we are gonna, we have time for a few questions from the audience. So if you wanna raise your hand um, and I'll repeat the question for Radu. Yes, right there. In the first part of the film, right? It's, yeah. The, the, the question is just about using Bucharest as a, a location, and you know the neighborhoods you worked with, and 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 how you the character moved from one 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 part of town to another. Yeah, the gentleman seemed very angry on my. <laughs> I didn't hear the question, but uh, the tone was very. The pitch was. Uh, well, I think it's a, it's a, it's two ideas or two, two, two things I can say here. First of all, um, it's this idea that, uh, you know, we, we name, uh, we, we use the word city or town or city or whatever. Um, and uh, we forget that this is just, um, that the, this word doesn't have a substance. Uh, a city doesn't exist. A city is actually an agglomeration of people, of cars, of buildings, of objects, and uh, a community, so to speak. So uh, there is then, if you think about this idea that in a city where these people, so many people live and work and uh, have made the objects and the buildings and so on, you can see outside, uh, you can see, if you look carefully, a little bit of the things uh, that show what's behind, behind the closed door, so to say. Um, and Bucharest is a little bit maybe more interested, interesting than other cities uh, from Europe, at least, from big cities from Europe, because it's still a little bit more mixed. Uh, if we take and we just took a, a line from, uh, from margin of the city to the historical center, you can have in the same neighborhood, um, very almost run down houses. You can have some rich parts. You can have some poor parts. You can have this different layer of uh, how the city was destroyed by, by uh, interventions in the history. 
especially the, the Ceausescu regime, which mainly destroyed parts of the city, but also built others uh, in a quite ugly way, uh, but functional sometimes. And you can have see uh, even more how the city was destroyed by the neoliberal uh, regime we have after the 1989 revolution and by, the in, by this individualism. So this was the idea that if we, if, uh, you, you, you can see the values of the people, you can see the uh, kind of um, individualistical uh, behavior and values that we embraced after the revolution, very clear if you just take a walk in the city. It's not very true, I think, to, to, every, to every city uh, in the world, but I, th I, I still believe it's, it, uh, it's somehow uh, uh, true to, to, to Bucharest. You can see what's behind if you look carefully at, uh, at, uh, at the world. So that's what, well, that was the idea. And this is why uh, we have the actors uh, going on uh, about uh, in the story. So there are some scenes which, of course, are there to, 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 to advance the narrative, to advance the story. But everything is staged uh, completely documentary regarding the background and sometimes even the small interactions. Most of it is, is, uh, is uh, we didn't block the street like they do usually in, uh, in films. Uh, we just shot Cine Verite and that was it. We, we wanted to capture that. Uh... Okay, any other? Yes, right in the middle. Yep. The question is about casting um, the film, and especially in the third part and the ethnicities that you wanted to include in the film. Uh, the, the third part of the film, which is made more or less like a, like a sitcom, I called it sitcom, or it could be a Commedia dell'arte thing, uh, tries to represent uh, a kind of let's say middle school, uh, uh, middle class school or a middle class dream uh, school in a way. And uh, the problem with schools in Bucharest actually is a lot of, uh, of uh, is a lot of, uh, how should I say, uh, problematic because there are no, what is considered good schools. Actually, what you see in the film is quite accurate if you take, tone down the exaggerations a little bit because it's like a caricature and Picasso used to say that the caricature is not realistical, but is truthful. So what is behind is uh, quite true uh, for the values of the parents who try to, to, to find these so-called good schools. And one of the, one of the, the thing with uh, a good school uh, usually is that foreigners or expat people, which we don't have that many in Bucharest would be in uh, in uh, would have the, their kids in this school. So if you have a foreign parent or uh, a foreign family, either from Eastern Europe, and we have a Czech lady there, either from um, I don't know other countries, we we have a very small community of black people, many of them which were uh, coming to, to Romania, I mean, some of them, I don't know, in, in the eighties for political reasons from, from uh, different African countries and so on and so forth. So if you have parents like that, it's like a proof that the school, uh, school is, uh, is better. Other than that, the, the casting in that part is professional actors, most, mostly some of them amateur actors. And uh, I have uh, two or three people coming from uh, very, very popular uh, entertainment uh, television. Like there is a guy with a huge uh, head like that. He's exactly taken from a television uh, sitcom, which is quite old already. I mean, it started like 20 years ago and uh, maybe disappeared a few years ago, but people still know him very well because it was like the epitome of bad taste in, uh, in, uh, in Romania. People would, uh, would, would be very much against this uh, character and uh, the, this uh, show, uh, which, as I said, was considered to be, a, and in a way it was, but it was very intelligent sometimes to be the 
embodiment of the bad taste. And actually, it was very funny in the in the film because um, when he appeared at the beginning, the professional actors who are a little bit more, you know, stiff uh, regarding this kind of things, they are working mostly in theater, uh, not only in cinema. So when they saw uh, this man at the beginning, uh, they had a lot of uh, haha, you know, that's so funny uh, to have this bad taste uh, actor. But then when they somehow realize that they play along with him, like near him, it was a little bit of a cringe uh, attitude in the in the cast. Can you elaborate on that? Like, what what to you is the is the usefulness of bad taste? Uh, well, it depends. Uh, it, 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 well, well, usefulness. I'm not sure it's a it's a word I can uh, relate to that. But yeah, well, I think it's um, especially art house cinema uh, in uh, all over the world. But I think in Europe, especially and uh, in Romania, is seen uh, like you know a kind of fight uh, against bad taste, um, against what is considered bad taste. Uh, but in in the same time, if you if we look in the history of of the arts or of, of some of the of the um, artistical forms, especially in the mode of starting with the modernist times, we can see that uh, they were not refraining from what is considered bad taste. But on the contrary, you can incorporate it, and you can it's still a freshness there, and it's still a rebelliousness uh, in in a way that you can I think you can uh, work with and you can redirect in other uh, in other uh, directions you can subvert in a way a little bit and uh, i think yeah i think that's the, that's the thing that's why it, i still believe it's important i like uh, all this um, bad taste and i'm also against very much and this is something i, I will never uh, be i'm against the people who consider culture or to be cultured or cultivated or to know arts uh, or to be like uh, a class uh, thing, to go against the people who don't know. We still uh, have a lot of uh, what we would call, probably call conservative or reactionary intellectuals, which are many, many, many of them, that for them to read a book means to say, you know, I just read a book, I'm, uh, I'm better than you, I'm better than the others who don't uh, do that. And I don't believe that, I think to read a book is, something that it's a necessity is something that can be useful because if you read Mein Kampf then it's not so useful to read the book but uh, it shouldn't be a class uh, a class symbol you know uh, to, to be an intellectual or an artist or whatever so this is why actually in a, where the film was released in Romania many of these people were much very much against the film not even watching it just because of the title which is bad taste because of the actors you know they would say how how can we see a film like that and i like that i think it's a good step okay all right before we call it a night let's take one more question um yeah over there sir yep I, I might have missed part of that, but the question is about the, the sort of insults and potentially offensive statements that are made. Sorry? In, offensive statements about women? How, just like, I guess culturally, how comfortable are people saying those things in Romania? the insults in the film well you know, as i said it's a very vulgar <laughs> society and a very vulgar country and regarding the whitman and the, and the treatment of women um which also the film shows or comments uh, on uh, uh, in which and i consider it completely grotesque and is grotesque i think in the film well, it's something that, uh, you know, it's still, uh, Romania is still an extremely patriarchal society. It's still, <clears throat> and not, uh, I think the situation is a little bit better uh, in the bigger cities, which are not many, two or three big cities in Romania, 
but apart from that, the country is, is absolutely uh, extremely patriarchal and, and um, machist and misogynistic. So because somebody asked me, could you, could you imagine a film like that with the men, with the, if, if the teacher was a man? And they would say, no, it wouldn't, be the, it, it wouldn't work because a behavior of men like that would be accepted with not so many problems, but for a woman is, is like a taboo. So uh, yes, it's, uh, uh, I don't know if I answer the question, but uh, it's culturally as the, 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 the person asked, it's unfortunately extremely, uh, extremely um, uh, well accepted uh, in a way, but I think, I hope there are, there are signs here and there that the situation changes. There's some feminist movements. There's a lot of, uh, you know, a little bit more uh, reactions against people who would say, you know, a woman should just stay in the kitchen. A woman is always a bitch, uh, uh, all these kinds of things, which are, I remember, you know, 25, 28 years ago, uh, uh, when I was in high school, one of the hits, uh, a song on the radio played uh, all day and even uh, you know we were in high school and uh, some sometimes the teachers were laughing with us at this uh, kind of song was uh, having the uh, lyrics saying to, to a woman who's beaten by her husband while he's saying to her you're beautiful but you're stupid and I think nowadays uh, a song like that wouldn't be broadcasted on the radio. So I think there's small progress, but there is uh, still uh, in uh, a lot to to go. Yeah, and maybe not just in Romania. So, um, uh, all right. Well, I think we have to call it a night. It's pretty late here, and it's uh, very early for you. But Radu, I really want to thank you for joining us uh, tonight. So, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, and we'll have you in person next time. I hope so. I I would love to. Thank you for taking the film. Thank Congratulations you again on the film. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. Bye.